Welcome to the Circuit of Success and thank you for joining me. You know, it's been said that success comes to those who wait, but I believe the opposite. I believe that it's earned with the right attitude, a great belief system, and action every single day. When you mix that in with faith, courage, discipline, and most importantly, a vision, that's when greatness happens. Now let's dive right in to this week's guest. Welcome to the Circuit of Success. I'm your host, Brett Gilliland, and today, man, I'm fired up because I love basketball. I'm excited to be here with Mr. Larry Hughes. How you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for being here. We got our friend, uh, our friend Ryan Luchtefeld over here. Uh, Man, the man. Do we even talk about the quote that we just heard from our friend, uh, Mike, who you just met? You know what? I hear it all the time. That's his, uh, that's his (laughs) (laughs) go-to. So Ryan likes to say he's uh, he outscored you in college, but the, the context is there. How many years did it take Ryan to do that, right? Yeah, it took him, what, four or five? <laughs> no, no it t- took him four, it took me one. That's uh, right. But yeah, no, th- those were good times, definitely right, good times in my life. Well, we'll talk more about that stuff, but for those people that may not know who Larry Hughes is, why don't you give us a little background about yourself, where you grew up, what made you the man you are today? Uh, I'm Larry Hughes, uh, 39 years old, um, from St. Louis, Missouri, downtown St. Louis, um, born and raised, uh, I bleed St. Louis, bleed 314. And that's really w- what's made me the person I am today. Uh, my community, my surroundings, my environment, uh, being raised by my mother, who was a single parent, um, just instilled, you know, just values of working hard, you know, pushing through, uh, never give up, yep. you know, and that's carried me, uh, through my life and just, uh, to uh, keep pushing, uh, you always have adversity, uh, and St. Louis is built around, you know, adversity and, and fighting through the struggle. So, um, really, that's that's what shaped me, you yeah. know, and that's that's what I carry with me uh, through the many places I've played in the NBA, the many places that I've traveled. Um, you know, there's no problems; there's only solutions. Yeah, yeah, especially if you can be the uh, be the solution, right? Come with the solution instead yep. of have a problem and complain about it. We always talk about that here at work. Yep. So. Yeah, I mean that's that's huge. I mean, I you know I obviously run run a run a business and and you know have employees that work for me as well. Yeah. And you know, there's always things that come up. You yeah. know, there's always things you have to deal with on a daily basis. But you know, I'm I'm big on coming to me with the solution to the problem that you thought you had, as opposed to giving me a problem that. You know that you got to fix. That I have to fix. Right. Exactly. Exactly yeah. right. So we got to talk about it. You were on the uh, the Golik and Wingo show yesterday. Mm-hmm. Now you got to you know come hang out with this guy. Yeah. Which is kind of funny for yeah. me, but uh, or cool for me. But uh, anyway, uh, Godfather Jason Tatum mm-hmm. uh, played with LeBron. Mm-hmm. We we're just talking about the game. What are your thoughts on what Jason's doing for the Boston Celtics right now, and being from St. Louis? Well, I'm, I'm more I'm excited for him. I'm following him, keeping up with them on my phone, you know, and television. You know, we going to a few games. Uh, but me and Jason's dad are, are close. Justin, uh, we grew up together. Uh, that's like my brother. So yes, that's my godson, and that's you know that's the the, the title. But he's really like my nephew because me and Justin are are, are brothers. Yeah. Um, uh, we like I said, we've grown up together. I call his mom, you know, my mom. Uh, his little his little sister is my sister. Okay. Uh, so it's a it's a family deal. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm just happy to see him successful. Uh, he dropped into a great situation being in Boston uh, with a great coach. Uh, great history uh, from an organizational standpoint. Um, so I'm, I'm happy. I'm, yeah. I'm glad that's where he, he ended up at. Yeah, it's phenomenal to see. And so I think, what do you think, so right now, when you think about when you played or the mindset for Tatum, I mean, some people get on that show and it's the big light, right? And they don't, they don't do what he's doing. Yeah. So what do you think he's doing mentally that's different than what a lot of other people maybe didn't rise to the occasion with? I think he's been, been prepped, you know, for the situation. I think he's... Uh, you know, had a goal in mind from a young kid. I think uh, everyone around him, you know, supported his goals uh, to, to help him get to, to where he wanted to be. And I think he's been prepped for it, uh, playing a lot of basketball, doing a lot of skill development work, um, a lot of communication, uh, going to a good high school. Yeah. All that stuff plays into, you know, what he's doing now. I mean, it's his foundation, and that's what he's able to show, you know, once the, the lights come on. Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about also then about LeBron James. You played yep. with LeBron. Uh, yep. I saw you were the second leading scorer behind LeBron James the year you guys went to the NBA Finals. And so what did you learn from LeBron? Or maybe what did you even teach LeBron? Because mm-hmm. you played with him when he was young. I mean, what was it like playing with a guy that now is, you know, arguably one of the top two or three greatest players in the ever to play? Well, like I said, all those things that I learned, you know, growing up, you know, as far as adversity, yeah. uh, you know, never give up, always fight through, always push through. You know, those are the conversations that I was having with Bron. I mean, yeah. as, a, as a young kid, um, you know, coming into the league, you know, um, 
if it was a matchup, if it was a, a tough matchup, maybe you say a Carmelo Anthony. Yeah. A lot of times I had that matchup early on, yeah. you know, but now you see Bron taking that matchup. It's because that's what we talked about. Right. If you, that's what you want. You have to take on that matchup. You have to take on that challenge and you have to push through. So I think I had a, you know, a little hand in, you know, it's Absolutely. kind of this early uh, thought process as far as to what, you know, he wanted to be in the league. So talk to us about success and what, how do you define success for your life and, uh, and for others? Success is, uh, it's a journey. Um, it's opportunity, um, and success is being prepared uh, to sacrifice. And I think you don't get to, to be successful if you don't uh, sacrifice. Uh, that's sacrificing time, that's sacrificing family, uh, that's sacrificing excitement. Uh, so being successful with, for me is um, just having the opportunity to, to help others uh, at the same time. Uh, do right by yourself. Yeah. So obviously, you you know, sports guy, all that kind of stuff, but now being the business owner, and we talked about that just a second ago, but why is the fundamentals, and I know that's big in the Larry Hughes Basketball Academy, but, but the fundamentals and the basics, apply that to the business world and for our listeners, the business leaders that are out there listening. Why are fundamentals and doing the basics so important? Uh, I think it's the, the, the foundation. You know, I think it's, it's building the legs to the table um, from a business standpoint, I mean, Obviously, having the right system in place of, you know, your, your numbers and your performance, but, you know, hiring the right people, you know, having the right people involved with, with what your mission is and, and where you're pushing to is, you know, is the biggest factor in business, um, you know, but that's how you lay your foundation. That's how you build your culture of, you know, how you're going to operate as a business. And, you know, it's, it's a learning process and, and people have done it for years and years and years. So there's books and there's information out right. there, but until you're in it. Uh, it, it looks different, you know, yeah. all the time. Yeah, and I think it's hard too. Don't, I mean, I, I assume you would agree with this, but you know, when you have been successful and you've done something for a long time, to still commit to the basics, right? And so yeah. I, I remember I went to Cardinal Spring Training a few years back, and I was just fascinated by the fact that they were, you know, practicing how to bunt and mm -hmm. practicing how to the, the the pitcher to go cover first base on a bunt and catch the ball, right? And those little things that, as you probably see kids yeah. today, and I know my kids and Ryan's kids, it's like. For, for them to focus on those simple tasks, kids don't want to do it. No, and, and, and we're results driven, so they see that and they think that that just kind of happened, right? They just see that, yeah, they're, maybe that they're older, so they, they just gained that sort of knowledge, from, yeah. you know, from the little kids. But, you know, if they continue to build in that way, in that, in, in, in that format, then they'll have those skills to do the extra stuff, yeah. right? But the extra stuff only comes when you have the basics, like, if Steph Curry couldn't shoot a free throw, he couldn't shoot a three-point from half court. I mean, right. so he's building that foundation and now be the person that you see. Yeah. And in basketball, a lot of kids want to follow because he shoots the ball from, right. from you know, anywhere. Anywhere he wants, court. right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. makes it. So um, talk about that leadership. So on and off the court, uh, and especially now using that business mindset, what does it take to be a great leader? Uh, man, that's, for me, it's a, being a listener. Being a listener uh, and, 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 and giving or um, allowing ownership of, of what you're doing, right? Even if they're an employee, if they're an hourly employee, um, you know, letting them have ownership in what they're doing, what they're working with. Mm. I found that's been good, you know, from, from a leadership standpoint because you get the buy-in, you know, and, and that's, you know, being a leader, I mean, if you can get the buy-in, then you're, you're headed in the right direction. Yeah. And how do you do that? So I noticed you had your mission statement and all that kind of stuff. Is that, is that something that you, you do because of your vision and you, you take some time away from the business and work on that? Or how does that come to your, to your business world? Well, I actually, um, it's good to know people. Yep. So I've been connected. I uh, had the opportunity to talk to some good business people uh, who built businesses uh, that's what they do, yep. you know, and not to be the smartest person in the room. I find that to be, you know, taking back steps. So I always want to surround myself with good people um, and learn from yep. them. So a lot of the information I'm giving you today or that I talk about is things that I've learned, and that I've heard, that I'm able to apply to the things that I do uh, in, in everyday life. So, so listening on both ends, you're listening to your um, your employees or your staff, but also listen to the people that have done it before you that have made those mistakes and 
can make you a better uh, leader. Something I saw when I was researching this, and I say it all the time, and people around me probably get tired of hearing me saying it, but I say we got to slow down to speed up. Yeah. Right. And I heard you say in the NBA, I think it was yesterday yeah. actually on the yeah. the Golic show, and and you said you got to slow down to speed up in the NBA because they were talking about how LeBron's average speed was the slowest in the yeah. NBA or something yeah. like that, and how irrelevant that is. Yeah. Uh, but talk to us about slowing down to speed up and why that's so important. Well, in a basketball sense, I think that that's how we develop the kids. Um, they're in the game, so they're just starting. So there's a, a million things going on at one time. You got, you know, nine other kids asking for the basketball. You got right. five other people trying to snatch the basketball from you on defense. So there's a lot of things going on. So their game is just fast. I mean, they're running, you know, full speed. It's a rat race. <laughs> Right. In the NBA, you talk about you slow down to get organized, then you go ahead and they execute what you've been working on. So that's the difference between youth basketball and, and obviously the professional level. Uh, but from a business standpoint, it's just the, the basic blocking and tackling. I mean, it's the, you know, is your website accurate? Right? Right. If someone clicks onto your site, can they get to what they want to get to? Right? If they want to sign up, do they just have to click you know, one time or two times or three times? Right? Yeah. If they click three times, they're probably not going to sign up. So these are the kind of things that we've learned from a, just from a basic, like blocking and tackling to make sure that what you're offering, people can actually get right. to it. That's good. That's good advice, too, because in the speed of the world, right, we live in, we want it. We yeah. want it right now. Yeah. And yeah. If I had to click three times, I'm not doing you, you it. Know you're not doing it. It's too you're, difficult. You're not doing it. Which yeah. is crazy. But um, what would you tell the Larry Hughes of 10 or 15 years ago? Go back in your life, and what would you tell that guy? Man, continue to listen. You know, continue to uh Keep your ears open, uh, your mouth closed, you know, you know, for the majority of the time. Um, and be patient, continue to be patient. And you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. But I think that that's adversity and that, that builds your character. Um, you know, the sooner you make those mistakes, the faster you can um, apply that information and be better than you were the first time. Um, and stay positive. Yeah. You know, because things happen in this world and in this space that you can't control. And uh, you just have to adjust to it, and you have to deal with it, and you got to push through. Um, so those are that, that's what I would tell my athletes back adapt, here. right? They, they adapt for sure. And so when you think when you look back at Larry Hughes ten or fifteen years ago, you were playing. Was there the Larry that maybe didn't listen? Uh, of course, of course. I mean, I remember first coming into the league, being under Larry Brown as you know, eighteen year old kid that you know has been playing basketball at a high level for you know a number of years, yeah. and you have to take it back a step so you can listen and understand what the transition is from the NBA, excuse me, from college to the NBA. Yeah. So, yeah, I would definitely, you know, listen a little bit more. Uh, I've, I've always been a listener, um, but how the other person receives me listening, uh, I would say that I, that's one thing that I could change. Yeah. That's a big deal to listen, I, and I appreciate you keep talking about that because it is important. The more we talk, right? The yeah. More we oh yeah, for sure. Probably get ourselves in more trouble than we do. Yep. Than we do anything. So, what was it like? So you you go to SLU. Um, you guys had you know a great uh, your freshman year had a great season, and then you go to the NBA. Or is it because you know you were this unbelievably good high school basketball player, great college basketball player, and now you go to the NBA, right, where mm -hmm. everybody's good. Yeah. I mean, what was that transition like for you? I enjoyed it. You know, because I enjoyed to compete. You know, I enjoyed, um, you know, before the league, I mean, obviously traveling around and playing against high-level competition, so I knew that I could, you know, play at a high level. Yep. Um, but when you get into a, a locker room with grown men and, and you know, they, they have different issues and different problems than, than you have at, at 18, <laughs> right. uh, it's, it's different. And, and then the workload is, is different. But for me, it was about the work. Like, if you said, you know, 6 o'clock a.m., 4 o'clock a.m., you had to get row work in and then we have to go and practice, I'll do it just because that's the, you know, the competition, that's yeah. the workload, that's what goes along with it. So there wasn't a huge, huge transition other than the workload and obviously playing against, you know, grown men. Yeah. Well, um, another professional athlete told me this one time, and they said that it, the, the hardest thing wasn't getting, and this person was a baseball player, wasn't getting to the big leagues, but it was staying in the big leagues. I mean, was that something you constantly focused on in the off season, and did that drive you at all? You know, I, I didn't think about that until probably 10, 11, 12 years in. Like, yeah. you know, you think about the draft, right? They have a draft, and 30, 40 kids get picked up. 
So that means 30, 40. Somebody wants your job. Yeah, somebody has to go. Like, <laughs> right. the number's like, uh, somebody right. has to go. Right. But I didn't realize that, you know, from year one to seven or eight. I mean, like, it didn't, yeah. I felt I was good enough that it just didn't matter. Yeah. Right? But I didn't, you know, in, until, you know, year 10, and I'm like, you know what? I got to do extra work. Um, not get in shape as fast as I, I, I usually do. Um, and then you know what? The draft's coming around. <laughs> Maybe somebody yeah. coming to take this spot. So, yeah, yeah after like year 10, I mean, that, that came into play. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the circuits of success. And uh, we talked very briefly about this earlier. But when you hear the word attitude, what comes to mind? Uh, for me, uh, it's, it's your reflection. Uh, it's, um, attitude has a lot to do with, uh, with, with gratitude. Uh, we kind of put those things together within our programs, attitude and gratitude, is because, um, you know, if you're able to show gratitude, then, then your attitude is, is it should be a positive yeah. one. It's hard to be uh, thankful and mad all at the same time, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So beliefs, what were your belief systems growing up playing uh, today in the business world? What are those beliefs, those fundamentals that you know Larry Hughes has to do every single day to be successful? I have a positive outlook. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I have a positive outlook. So let me interrupt you, sorry, real quick. So how do you do that? So because not every day you wake up and it's like, oh, it's you know, like today, seventy-two and sunny. So how do you how do you get yourself in that positive mindset? I think it's uh, it's over time for me, uh, knowing that you're not going to win every day. Um, so the, the the your best chance to be successful in that day is to have a positive start to that day, to think positive. Um, and I have a huge to-do list. Um, so things that I don't get to, I just roll it over to the next day. Yep. Uh, so I'm continuously rolling. So when I wake up the next day, it's like, okay, what do I have to attack today? Right. All right. What, what sort of success will I find today? Because if I don't find success in the first thing, I just move on to the second or to the third, to the fourth, um, because I've created that mindset of these are the things that I want to get done today. And if I don't get them done today, then I'll just roll them into the next day. There's no failure that I didn't get to it that first day because I'll roll it into yep. to the, to the next day. So never give up on it. And so are you a visualization person? I mean, you know, a lot of people you'll hear, they wake up in the morning and they visualize the day or they visualize their visions and the things they want to do and who they want to become. Is that, is that a part of your I, life? I think that could be, a, would be a combination of, of, of vision and planning. Okay. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge planner. I uh, use two different, you know, calendars uh, yeah. for, for my day, uh, business and family. Um, so I would definitely say that, yes, that's a, you know, I, I envision being successful every day. Got it. I, I envision being successful. I envision anything that I left off, you know, from a phone call or from an email to wake up in that email that said, yes, it's approved, or yes, it's a success, or yes, it's a go. Yep. Like, I, I, you know, I look forward to that. Right. And wouldn't you agree that it is a choice? I mean, because you could, you could wake up every day, right, and have a bad attitude. Yeah, for sure. Right. For sure. I, I, I would definitely, 100%, that, that it's a choice. Yeah. Uh, circumstances are what they are, uh, but your mindset is, is you know, something that you know, most of us control. Yep, absolutely. So what are the actions? I mean, what did you do again playing and now in the business world? What are those actions? If you know if you do these, you know, this one or two or three things every day, you'll be successful. I would have to say listen for me. Listen for me because I think in business there's, a, there's always you know, things on the table that are spinning that are you know, just ready to tip off the table. Yep. Uh, so me listening and understanding what those issues are and then applying energy um, to certain situations. Yep. Uh, so it always comes back to, to listening um, and, and, and being prepared to, to listen because you know, there's a lot of hidden gems within conversations. Right. And if you don't listen, then you, know, you can't pick them up. I like it. So when I say the words talent versus hard work, what comes to mind? I think talent is, is given, uh, and hard work is, is something that you, you develop over time. But I definitely think that you're, you're given talent. Yeah. Right? Just kind of born with it? You, you, I think you're, you're born with talent. Yeah. It's, it's what you apply to that talent that's, you know, hard work and the dedication part that happens over time. Yep. Because, you, you, you know, you, you won't be successful just in one day. That's something that is going to happen, you know, over time. So that's, you know, that, that's really my, my mindset. Right. Was the old saying something like uh, hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work? Exactly. Right? So you can be talented all day long, but if you don't work at it. Yeah, it's, it's a gift. Right. It's a gift. Just like yeah. something that someone gives you for your birthday. And if it's, a, you know, if it's a video camera and you put it up on your shelf and you, you never use it, hmm. then you, you just got a video camera for, <laughs> for right. a present yeah. and you never, you never use it. But <laughs> I will look at all those things that that video camera 
can do if you actually, you know, apply like what, what it is. Good analogy. Yep. So let's talk about fears. Did uh, were fears ever a big part of your, uh, you know, either growing up or when you were playing all that stuff? Was it was fear? Did it drive you? Uh, I, yeah, fear drives you. Drives me. Uh, it, it motivates me. Um, I, I really only fear loss. Hmm. Really, I mean, and that's not loss in a, in a competitive situation. That's loss, like you know, from a family or a close friends standpoint yep. like I don't fear anything else like okay. that's that's you know a business day or a basketball day or competition day or hard work day you know no problems at all you know just one fear of, of yeah. you know the loss yeah and how many of the fears you put in your mind actually came true to the magnitude you put them in your mind to be uh probably just one I mean I lost my brother you okay. know when I was uh, in Cleveland in uh, 06 and that was something that was a fear that was like, um, <laughs> it was real. Right. It was real. And it was one of those tough things to get over. Um, but using basketball helped me, you know, get over that, yeah. you know, that fear of, of what's next. And he was sick for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he was a heart transplant uh, recipient. And uh, he was, you know, getting ready pretty close to being on the list for another heart. Wow. Because uh, he had it for uh, 10 plus years. Uh, so, yeah. Wow. So that was, uh, that was tough. So yep. um, let's talk about your habits and your rituals for success. What were those habits that you did every single day? I know you talked about the listening and the positive mm -hmm. attitude, but was, what was the, was it working out? Was it eating a certain way? Were you superstitious? I mean, what were the things that you did? Nah, it, it, you know what? I have one habit or maybe superstition is I always put my right foot shoe on first. Is that right? Uh, and that's, you know. I don't know where it came from. Uh, maybe it was after having a good game right. or, or a good experience or something. But I've, and, and I actually don't really know when it started. I just noted just myself. Know. Yeah, because one day I put my left foot on. I was like, oh, it's not, it's not right. Redo. Redo. <laughs> Take it off. Yeah. yeah, put my right shoe on and then put my, yeah. put my, my left shoe on. So, so that, for those of you listening, so Larry's guaranteeing if you put your right shoe on first, you'll be successful. You may be right? successful. You I, never I don't know. know. You, you can always try it. You never know. <laughs> you can always try it. So let's talk about for people that um, you, you get off track, you get disappointed, right? Because not everything is a success. And as much as we like to talk about success, it's not reality to always be successful. So what did you do and what could you recommend? And even the people you saw that were great uh, at their sport, uh, what did they do to bounce back quickly from disappointment? Um, I think preparation, preparing yourself. Uh, it's hard work, that's road work, that's doing everything before you actually get into that situation. Um, so if you shot poorly, you're getting up extra shots. Um, you know, th those are the things that are consistent, um, and that's work. Work is consistent. You, if, if you're able to uh, apply the work, you can be s consistent, and you know, things will, will, will usually end positive. So in your world, unlike you know my world, in the business world, we don't have the the you know the everyday media all over us. If we miss a shot, or we do this, or critiquing mm -hmm. every one of our moves, right? So how did you clear the noise and just go perform? Uh, I think that's your your mindset. My mindset um, was to be focused on who I am, understand who I am, um, and, and how I deal with the media is. is was a thought process, right? They're covering a game, they're covering what your actions are, they're covering what you're doing. They're not necessarily covering who you are, or what you're going through, or what you've been through. Because they don't know a lot of times when you go, you know, 0 for 8, you know, what's really going on in, right. in your head. Like, they don't really know that, so they can only talk about what the action is. Yeah. So I never took it personal, um, and that allowed me just to move on. And I'm a huge listener, I'm not a big talker, so if I see those guys out, there's no, there's right. no issue. We just move on to the next, right. you know, to the, to the next deal. Well, you got voted uh, most, like most acceptable of the media. Yeah, I did, I did in, 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 in Cleveland. Yeah, because it's 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 their job. Yeah, right? it's their job. You communicate with them, uh, but again, they don't know what's actually going on. They only know, you know, what those actions are. So for me, I never took anything personal. Oh, this guy shouldn't be paid this amount of money. Well, it's not up to you to decide. Right. And my family is very happy that we're in this position. So. I wouldn't take that personal, yep. you know, so I'm able to not have any, you know, clouded thought process when I'm going out to play. It's just a basketball game right, I'm going right. to play. 
It's probably better to keep those guys on the good side anyway, right? I, always. <laughs> they have last word. Right, exactly. They, they have the last word. It's going to be in print. They, they have the last word, and yeah, they're, trying to, uh, they're trying to feed their families as well. So let's talk about the uh, Larry Hughes Basketball Academy now. You obviously don't have to do this stuff, so uh, I would assume that means it's a passion and uh, something you want to help the community with. So, so why is Larry Hughes uh, doing this basketball thing? Um, I wanted to be in the, the basketball space, obviously. Uh, basketball has given me a lot uh, through yeah. the years. Um, but then again, I understand that we're not all going to be professional basketball players and be, be paid to play a sport. So it's huge that we build young people up um, from a character development, from a leadership, uh, using basketball as that sport. Mm -hmm. So I have you know, more fun when you know, the kids come in and you know, we do a pound or we do a high five, we look each other in the eye and you know, we say hi, we ask how your day is going because those are the things that are gonna get them to where they wanna be in life you know, ultimately. Um, but for me, you know, I use basketball because I know basketball like the back of my hand. You know, right. It's like a brain surgeon knows, you right. know, when you go see, you have problems with your brain, you go see a brain surgeon. Well, I know basketball just that much. So to come back to St. Louis and give some of that information out to the young people, whether they have aspirations to be a professional basketball player or they just want to compete and play with their friends yeah. in the backyard, everyone has an opportunity to be successful because it's about who you are on and off the court. It's right. not just about, you know, basketball to game. Yeah. yeah, so there's obviously a much bigger picture here than just basketball, right? I know the, it's about basketball, but... There is, there is. I mean, I think of tons of parents, they put their kids in, in you know, programs and organizations that are um, athletic you know, programs that are driven just basically on the sport yep. um, and wonder why, you know, our young kids are you know, not listening at home or not doing the right things in school uh, because it's not a, just about the sport. Right. Right. It's just not just about the sport, especially as we work with the young kids uh, from, you know, K through eighth grade is really the sweet spot. Those kids need, you know, as much development, as much conversation, as much mentorship as possible right. so they can be successful. Yeah. So what's your philosophy on, uh, in today's world, you know, with Ryan and I talk a lot about this, is, you know, we're bouncing around from whether it's basketball to baseball to soccer to track meet to, and the list goes on and on, right? And so um, what's your philosophy on multiple sports and what advice would you have for parents out there? Well, I think this, in today's uh, age, kids and families have to pick one sport sooner than ever. I think that that's just the way it's gone because of all the sports specific Yep. things that go on and just the high level of, of competition that goes on, you know, after youth. Uh, but for me and our program, we, we encourage multiple sports. Um, you understand uh, different body movements. Um, you're around a different group of people. Yep. So you're learning other people. I mean, that's the most important thing is that your basketball people are not necessarily your soccer people or your soccer people are not necessarily your football people. So if you're interacting with all these different groups, not only is we're, we're talking about learning the different sports and the body movements, but you learn about people, you know, and where they come yeah. from and, and, you know, what their interests are, why are they in, involved in soccer and not basketball or involved in basketball and not football. So I think that that's, you know, the most important piece to us encouraging, you know, our young people to go out and experience different sports that they're experiencing different, you know, ways of life yeah that's great perspective so what what are we doing what, let's not say we what's ryan doing wrong what are parents doing wrong in today's <laughs> world what are our parents how are we screwing up our kids i think we're in the middle um i think we're in the middle i, I think uh, and i go to games uh, i have the opportunity to to be a dad in the stands and not necessarily be a coach on the sidelines so i'm able to see things you know from all different yeah. angles um, and i think our parents especially from a competition side in basketball uh, do a very poor job of supporting their kids during the competition. Because what I find is that they're more focused on the coach of either team, whether it's their team or the other team, and the referees. They're not necessarily focused on what their kid is doing or what the team is doing. They're more concerned about what the referee is doing. So I think that that, that hurts the kids because they don't get that encouragement from the stands and then after the game, the first thing is said is something about that coach or something about that referee right. and not that, hey, I'm proud of you, you had a great game. You know, we didn't win this one and we didn't make this one, we'll get it next time. You know, I think a lot of the conversations and I hear and see a lot of the conversations are about the coach 
Yeah. Or the referees. It's always somebody else's fault. It's always someone else's fault. And I yeah. think that that's teaching a bad message. Yeah. So what, uh, what do you wish you had more time right now that you were able to do more of? Uh, right now is golf. Right now is golf. I've actually picked up the clubs a few years ago, and then I, I hurt my back, so I had to shut it down a little bit. <laughs> uh, but really golf. I've been getting out on the driving range and, and you know, planning to hit the course uh, sometime in June. But that for me is, is something away from what I'm normally doing and, and really what I'm comfortable doing yep. because it's something new and it's something different. Um, so yeah, I want to have spend some more I time like with you know, playing golf and being out there. Maybe I can help you with that. <laughs> I like it. So um, when you look back and so you think about your academy now and, and so you get the parents involved, you get the kids involved, what, you know, if I'm a parent listening to this, what, what makes your academy different that you're going to help my son with? Um, or daughter. I, I think it's the information. It's the information and it's the foundation. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of the whys and why these kids are doing what they're doing on the playing fields. Uh, it's why you take that first step. It's how you take that first step. Uh, it's why you use you know, your inside hand on defense um, when you're in the passing lane or versus the other hand. Um, so a lot of that information become, comes from my years in the NBA, being around tons of coaches, uh, there's tons of information and bring that information back. Yeah. So with our program, what you'll get most importantly is the information. And then how you apply that information, how many hours you work outside of the academy. Uh, because we only get them an hour, you know, at night. Yeah. So it's what they're doing outside of the academy uh, that's really going to tell the difference. Yeah, that's a big deal. So what risk, when you look back at your life, are you happy you took? Um, I think going to St. Louis University. I mean, I was pushed to go outside of Anywhere. St. Louis. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I was I was pushed to go outside of St. Louis. I mean, it started, you know, very early in high school. Yeah. Um, Do you remember that first call? Like, how, like, what grade were you in? Uh, I think I was 15. Yeah, I, I was 15, and it was a little different. Obviously, back then it was, uh, you know, they had these guys called runners, so they were kind of. <laughs> they can get they can get who they needed to get to. Yeah. Uh, but it's it started very early. Um, but my family being here from St. Louis and everything I knew and, yeah. and understood was in St. Louis. I mean, I think that that was a risk that I was willing to take. Yeah. And and obviously it paid off. But a lot of the other programs, you know, push a number of pros out, you know, right. of, of their 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 universities. But you know, we made it happen in St. Louis. I'm That's definitely right. happy that. Uh, yeah. You know, I, t I took that chance. That's awesome. And then, uh, I guess, final questions. When you think about that success you've had and you think about uh, the next generation, what, what do you hope? Uh, you have Larry Hughes Jr., mm -hmm. right? And you have other, do you have other kiddos? Yeah, I have two, I have two uh, daughters that are older. Actually, okay. one at uh, St. Louis University. Oh, okay. And the other one is, uh, will be at TCU next year. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I did see that. Yeah. I saw that on Instagram. Yeah. So what, what do you hope that you're passing on to them? What's your legacy for them? Um, hard work, hard work, uh, be consistent, um, give energy and effort to the things that you're doing, uh, whether that's in school work or that's on the playing field, um, and just be, be encouraged, you know, be, be encouraged to be successful, be encouraged to help people, uh, be encouraged to motivate, um, cause a lot of things that happen are not necessarily money driven, you know, they're not necessarily money driven. So be happy with what you're doing, be passionate in what you're doing. And like they said, never let a, a, a day of work feel like work. So it, it should always be something that you, you enjoy doing. So tell us the greatest player you played with uh, and the greatest player you played against. Um, I would say with would have to be Michael Jordan. Uh, you know, I played with Mike in, in, in D.C. Uh, obviously he wasn't, you know, the black Jesus of, of, <laughs> of, of old. Right. Uh, but he's still he's pretty darn you know, he's, close. He's, he's, he's still uh, the greatest basketball player that that, that I've seen play and, and play with. So if somebody asks you, and we can we can always edit this out if we have to. But if somebody asks you, Kobe, LeBron, Michael, you got to start a team. Larry Hughes gets first pick in the draft. Who's he pick? Oh, that's an easy one. That's that that takes up um, point. A point one seconds. That's that's Michael Jordan. You can answer before yeah, I yeah, stop yeah, asking that's, the that's, question. That's, right? that's Michael Jordan. Uh, right. And why is that? Um, his his mentality, um, his um, his never give uh, mentality, um, how hard he worked, uh, his understanding of the game, yep. his and I, th I think really just everything that goes along with mentality. 
you know, and being successful. Yep. Is 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 what you know what draws me to 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 Mike. I had the privilege of uh, watching him play. I guess four times I get to go see him play as a Bulls player. And yeah. Met him at a golf tournament one time, and I slipped down a hill. And he literally grabs my arm and pulls me back up. He's yeah. like, you all right, kid? I'm like, <laughs> I couldn't even talk. It was awesome. And he gave me his autograph, so it was oh, pretty that's, cool. That's good. I, I, got his, I have his jersey up in my house. It's only really? one, of, one of few that, that I yeah. have at the house, and uh, he's definitely one of them. So he was the best one you played with, and who was, uh, who was one of the against, toughest to play against? Uh, I would say, you know what, I have uh, three. Can I give you three? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you got Allen Iverson, mm. uh, who was always my matchup because we were good friends and the coaches felt like he wouldn't go at me as hard as he would go <laughs> at everybody else. That's good. Uh, then there's uh, Kobe, yeah, uh, who was just an assassin with you know the the amount of times he touched the basketball, the amount of times that he was able to shoot the ball and develop his shots. He was just always tough to guard. Yeah. Uh, and then Tracy McGrady. Uh, mm. Tracy McGrady uh, started off a little bit slow, uh, but once he got to Orlando, again he was always my matchup, and you know he's six eight and. One of those guys that, that that's deadly. Yeah. So those three guys are the toughest guys that I played yeah. against in, in the league. So if you could apply to the, the, the LeBrons, the Kobe's, the Tracy McGrady's, the Larry Hughes's of the world, uh, what if you could say one thing that you could apply from that that would help our listeners in the business world? What is it? I think never give up. You know, is is the attitude, is the mindset. Yeah. I think never give up uh, because. Playing in the NBA, it's, it's grueling. I mean, it's it's hard work. The, the product that you see on the court, you know, on a nightly basis, is is the results of a lot of hours of pre- preparation and hard work and dedication to their yeah. bodies, to their minds, and just to their craft of, of the basketball game. So I think that you know, in a business space, um, with that same mindset of never giving up, knowing that you won't win every day, is is very valuable. Um, because again, it allows you to, to move on to the next day. Yep. It allows you to, to continue to fight, uh, continue to, to, to try to win and be successful. Awesome. So where can our listeners find more, uh, more of you? Social media? Yes, the social media, uh, the real L Hughes uh, on, on all the platforms, um, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Um, I think that's really the only ones that I kind of yeah. use them. There's so many of them, right? There, there's so many of them. And then the LHBA, uh, platform. Our website, we do a great job of getting the information yeah. out um, and, and just being really current and up to date with anything that someone wants to know, whether it's skill development, whether it's team play, whether it's character development or leadership or just uh, just the opportunities that are involved uh, with the program. That's uh, LHBASTL.com. You know, that website is, is, is great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Larry, thank you for being here. Thank you. It's great. Uh, Appreciate great it. Time Appreciate with it. You, Good time. Thanks a lot. Tune in next week for another episode of The Circuit of Success with Brett Gilliland on the lineupmedia.fm podcast network. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and through our website, circuitofsuccess.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and email any questions to info at circuitofsuccess.com.